What is happening guys and welcome back to the channel where for today's review we're going to be checking out the Transformers Reactivate Voyager Class Optimus Prime. Based on the upcoming video game produced by Splash Damage and this is the brand new Optimus Prime design. Now I know it's quite similar to what we're used to but in all honesty I really think he looks awesome. The design is just so iconic to how he did look in the 80s series yet has been stylized to better fit in with this realistic post-apocalyptic vibe. So as we check out the details, the face sculpt is looking so sick. Check out the mouth plate, the chest design too, I think looks so big and imposing. Just look at those multi-layered mechanized panels that we have for the torso. Even the shoulder, the bicep and the forearm design I think comes across as being super strong. And one thing you will notice with this Reactivate Prime is not only is the plastic top notch, but there are next to no hollow spaces on the robot mode at all, which is great because nine times out of 10, with some of the more recent mainline voyages that is something which is just to be expected but not for this guy look at the details that we have for the thighs and the realism that's been detailed into the shins i really think he looks great and whilst we have been shown very little when it comes to the actual transformers from what we have seen this does seem to be pretty accurate to how he will eventually show up in the game even down to the back details so check out the sculpting we have here there's a spinal column tucked up inside as well as an additional pair of boosters which he can also use as thrusters in truck mode even if you're not going to be a fan of the upcoming reactivate video game just as an optimus prime this is a really well made figure but let's check out the true power of a prime let's see what this guy is packing and of course, first up would be Optimus Prime's iconic Ion Blaster. Now, much like his design, this has been completely filled in front side to back and has been completely decked out in this really awesome matte black. So definitely a wicked blaster to accompany his robot form. And to pair with the Ion Blaster, we finally see the return of the Energon Axe, which I think is such a great weapon, and it's a shame that it's not included more with Voyager Prime releases, but detail-wise, this is looking great. Even the part which is going to form out of his arm has these spikes kind of sticking out to the sides. I really like how this too has been painted front to back, and the translucent Energon effect I think is looking sick. And then the third and final accessory he includes is one I'm pretty certain you guys have noticed already. It is the Matrix of Leadership. What truly makes this guy a prime. So as we take the chest windows and gently hinge these open as they have been cast out of transparent plastic, it does reveal the Matrix chamber, which is so sick. Now the Matrix is removable. Surprisingly, it's exactly the same sculpt as what we have been seeing since the Earthrise Optimus Prime. Considering this is a brand new design for a brand new video game, game I would have loved it had they gone for something a little more original but to be fair it does suit this design perfectly and to see them include a matrix of leadership with a Voyager scale prime I think is so cool and now, checking out this guy's articulation, he does not fail to impress. So, up first, the head's on a ball joint. This will look up, it will look down. It can then tilt side to side and look both left to right. The shoulders will move all the way around. They'll then hinge out to the sides. The elbows can bend. There's a rotation at the bicep, wrist rotation, a waist cut, which is not obstructed at all, which is awesome. The hips will kick forwards roughly to that far. They'll then kick back to that far before they're slightly obstructed due to this truck kibble they'll then kick out to the sides there is a thigh cut a knee bend which can go slightly past 90 which i think is epic and then finally we see the return of the iconic war for cybertron trilogy ankle rocker pivot but to see what this guy is truly capable of let's now put him through the pose test <laughs> Now, as we check out some comparisons, first up, we have the Transformers Reactivate Soundwave. Now, the only way to get this Optimus Prime at the moment is to purchase the two-pack. In all honesty, because this is a brand new video game and these are brand new molds, I'm not quite sure why they never just stuck them in the main line individually. Maybe because the game is not at the moment out. They weren't too certain how well these guys would sell, so maybe they will see individual reissues in the future. But at the moment, you can only buy them in a two-pack. This Soundwave is a pretty decent figure but Optimus Prime is by far the star of the show. 
Here is how he sizes up with a blast from the past. We have the Fall of Cybertron Voyager Soundwave. And I found it kind of interesting that there's roughly 11 years between these two releases. But as I mentioned previously, this is a really well-made Voyager. Even being compared to something like this, it holds up so well. The scale hasn't decreased at all. For those of you that perhaps don't want to go all in on this Reactivate line, I do think this Prime will blend in with some of the past gamer releases. Which, speaking of, here we have the actual Gamer Edition Studio Series War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Now, I think at the moment this Prime is the best out of his subline, but I'm going to be real, guys. This Reactivate line, I think, is killing Gamer Edition. I'm not quite sure why these Studio Series figures are not up to par with these releases, but here's this comparison. Next up, here we have the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Optimus Prime, which has definitely been one of my favorite releases of this year. But for this being the new guy on the block, I'm going to be real, guys. This is causing for some tough competition. Here he is compared alongside one of the tallest Studio Series Bumblebee movie Cybertronian characters. So we have Starscream. Here's the Gamer Edition Megatron. I'm hoping if they ever do bring out a Reactivate Megatron, that it is as good as this Optimus Prime. But even if they don't, the upcoming Bumblebee movie concept version looks like it would be a great companion piece to this Reactivate Prime. And then finally, just because at the moment I don't have the Reactivate Bumblebee, here we have the Gamer Edition version. And aesthetic-wise, these Reactivate designs do seem to be an almost great continuation to what we were seeing from the War for Cybertron game. Now, as we check out Optimus Prime's transformation, there are quite a few new tricks thrown in here, which I think really do spice up the transformation. So, for the first step, you're going to want to take a hold of the shoulders and hinge these here out to the sides, really and truly just to get them out of the way. Then you'll come down here to the foot. So, take a hold of the ankle joint and completely hinge that there out to the side. Then we'll spin around to the back. You'll take a hold of this grey section and flip this here outwards. Now, with that complete, we'll then take this blue piece and this grey thigh and try and disengage the connector which is on the inside. So just to show you guys, there is a tab which does slide into that slot. You'll want to free that up and then completely flip the shin all the way around just like that. Then on the top part of the foot is a void which will really nicely house over the top of the thigh. Then what you'll do is take a hold of the gas can, snap that there into place, flip here to the underside, take this gap filler and close that back up and do the same on the opposite side. So take that ankle joint, hinge this here outwards, spin around to the back, take this grey section, flare this out to the side. I also like how additional details which you do not see in either robot or truck mode are exposed. So that's definitely a great touch. Then again, disengage that hinge joint away from the shin and completely fold this here all the way up until the top part of the foot houses over the thigh, spin around here to the back, take that gas can, snap that into place, and then snap this piece in also. And then the final step, at least for the legs, would be to just combine them directly down the middle. And that really is the easy part out of the way. Now we'll come to the fists. So for these, you'll want to rotate those outwards so the palm is facing up like that. These panels have these tiny little indentations that you'll want to take your finger and just begin hinging them outwards. And I thought the compression was really cool because check that out. That's pretty much the side of the truck wrapped around the forearm. That was really cool. Come and do the same here for this side. So take that fist and rotate it so the inside of the palm is now facing outwards. You'll then want to take this hinge joint and completely open this section here up. Then we'll spin around to the back, take this section and separate it away from the core of the robot. So these little grey tabs do originally peg into those slots. You'll want to completely separate those. The next step would be to then detach these grey pieces away from this red section. So do the same here for this side. Detach those slots and tabs. With that now complete, we can take these grey pieces and hinge these here outwards. Do the same here for this side. Again, you're going to see a lot of compression. So take this red panel and completely extend that outwards and then extend this smaller one inside. I thought that was great. Check out all of those additional details. This guy is just so well designed. Now we'll spin around to the front. 
So you're going to want to take the chest windows and lift these up just a little bit so that we can take this torso plate and hinge it down really and truly just to allow for some clearance because now we're going to take this hinge it upwards and then take an additional panel which is hidden inside and then on the underside of this are two additional panels so great transformation i mean there are a lot of parts kind of compact inside prime's chest which initially really took me by surprise then we can take this and hinge it to the back for now you'll then want to take these sections hinge them outwards and then spin this here all the way around do the same here for this side so hinge this outwards spin this around and then combine these two pieces then we'll take this torso plate and snap it back into place now what we'll do is flip to the side of prime what i then like to do is take these boosters and begin tucking them underneath what were originally the front of the foot then what you'll do is take these gray pieces hinge them down and there are these little slots here that this will tab into so snap that in there it's best to do this now as it really helps to get them out of the way for the later steps so do the same here for this side just hinge this down and snap that there into place what i then like to do is take this entire hinge joint bring it to the back and then take the neck joint now this does actually tab in for robot mode for truck mode you'll want to detach it and bring it here all the way to the back now as you can see that will expose these little slots that these little tabs will peg into so it really is just a matter of lining these up really firmingly tabbing them into place and in the next step i think is the most challenging part about the transformation because there is a lot that you have to bear in mind so the first thing you're going to want to do is take the bicep joint and rotate this here around like that then you'll want to bend the elbow joint backwards like this and then take the shoulder joint begin hinging this down but then at the same time bring it backwards and what's going to happen is basically as you begin to compress both of these joints it's going to allow for enough clearance for us to tuck this into that hollow cavity now as you can see there's a tiny little tab which is going to peg into a slot on the underside so snap that there into place and that is one side transformed now let's do the same on the opposite side so bend that back a little bit take that bicep joint rotate that around bend here at the elbow so it should look like this then bend this shoulder joint down and then begin to compress this backwards trying to make sure everything does stay tabbed in so just make sure all of those tabs and slots are nice and clipped together and then the final step would be to take this piece flare these little gray pieces out just a little bit so they kind of go over the top of the fists we can then compress the entire front part of the truck and there are these two little slots which are going to snap into these tabs and bang here we have reactivate optimus prime fully transformed into his armored truck mode even in vehicle mode this optimus prime looks to be an absolute unit i really like the serrated front bumper and much like we were seeing from some of those siege figures there is some decent battle damage applied to the front in some ways i'm glad they never went crazy with this when you get him transformed into robot mode pretty much this battle damage is hidden so that's kind of a nice balance but detail wise the truck is looking so awesome and from the little we have seen of this guy's design again seems to be so accurate to how it will show up in the game it would have been amazing had they engineered a trailer hitch so this could have been compatible with earthrise prime's trailer but damn this is so much cleaner than that rise of the beast prime truck and look at those boosters the detail on this reactivate prime i just think is so impressive even the top part has been so nicely detailed would have been cool had this had some additional silver paint apps but so well built as we flip him here to the underside i think for the most part everything does stack up pretty nicely unfortunately the six wheels are mushroom pegged on they're not pinned on so he doesn't roll out as nicely as i'd like but he still has no issues and i would imagine you know with a bit of force he can definitely wipe out some decepticons which talking of in terms of weapon storage the axe does just store here along the side and the same goes for the ion blaster it's your average weapon storage would have been cool had it integrated a little more seamlessly but it will definitely do the job now as we check out some important vehicle mode comparisons up first we have the reactivate soundwave which as i mentioned previously is packaged in a two-pack with this optimus prime now i do believe some of the official images were a little misleading in terms of the scale of this soundwave they kind of depicted him as being the same size as the voyager optimus that's not the case at all these two packs include one voyager figure and one deluxe figure so this soundwave most definitely is a deluxe and i'm hoping you guys can kind of tell that from this comparison. 
for another blast from the past. Here we have that 2012 Voyager Fall of Cybertron Soundwave. Then we have the Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. And at least we know where the budget for this subline is going. It's clearly to the reactivate figures because these are so well done. Unfortunately, this Optimus Prime has so far been the highlight out of his subline. And even he weren't too great because check out the back of that truck. There is none of that ugliness here with the reactivate Optimus Prime. So if anything, these reactivate figures are going to kind of make some of the Gamer Edition figures come across as being even more ugly. Here he is compared again to one of my all-time favorite releases of this year, the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime, which by itself was already a very large Voyager, but you can see in truck mode, Reactivate Prime, much like in robot mode, is slightly bigger, and dare I say, a little better engineered. I mean, check out the trailer bed of this Prime compared here to the Rise of the Beast one. It really was a shame that at the last hurdle, they kind of dropped the ball here with the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Optimus, but here is how these two stack up. Here is how he compares alongside the Studio Series Cybertronian Starscream, who again is the largest out of that Bumblebee movie cast. So I'm really hoping this will give you guys a good sense of scale. Voyager class, War for Cybertron, Megatron, and despite this thing being a tank and this just being a truck mode, I think this Prime would have no issues in taking Megatron clean out, even in alt form. And then finally, here we have the Cybertronian Bumblebee, also from the Gamer Edition line. For a B and Optimus Prime scale, I think this works out really nicely. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Reactivate, Voyager class Optimus Prime. For the first entry in this Reactivate subline, I think this guy is an absolute banger. To be honest, I don't really have many issues at all with either the robot or the truck mode. The Transformation 2 I thought was really interesting. The only issue that I really have with this guy, and to be fair, it's not really a big one for myself, is that he is released in a two-pack. So I hope in the future for those who won't be picking up these two packs, this Prime will be made available separately. And it does make sense because not only is this an Optimus Prime, but it's a brand new mold for a brand new video game. I'm not quite sure why this is seeing a limited release, but I'd love to get your thoughts on Reactivate Prime. Definitely stay tuned to the review for Reactivate Soundwave. And until my next video, I thank you guys all so much for watching. Transform and roll out!